If this is your first time, welcome to A Moment with the Truth. If you've been here before or you're following with me regularly, welcome back. Today's title of the devotion is The Power of Purpose. I'm so excited that so many of you in our CV family and those of you who are just joining us are reading through the Bible uh, on a daily basis with us in our reading plan. Just had a phone call from a very special friend who is, who is from the Middle East that said to me, I'm current in my reading through the Bible with you. Then he said, I can't remember all the names in First Chronicles, but he said, I am familiar with so many of the names because of my culture. And a matter of fact, he told me that he has some Jewish friends and they're so impressed that he's reading the Bible and knows more of the names than they do. I'm thrilled that we are becoming so much more purposeful in our commitment to God's word. I never get tired of declaring our purpose here at CV Church. CV Church exists to develop fully devoted followers of Jesus Christ by connecting them with Father God, the local church, those we can serve, and people who don't yet know Jesus. For today's devotional, I want to look with you at 1 Chronicles chapter 12, 38 to chapter 13, verse 4. Chapter 13 is part of tomorrow's reading, but it's the fourth. It connected with the with chapter 12. My title for this devotion is The Power of Purpose, and we begin the soap process with the letter S, Scripture. I want to read to you 1 Chronicles chapter 12, 38 to 13, 4. All these men came to battle, battle array to Hebron with the single purpose of making David the king over Israel. In fact, everyone in Israel agreed that David should be the king. They feasted and they drank with David for three days for preparations had been made by their relatives for their arrival. And people from as far as Issachar, Zebulun, and Naphtali brought food on donkeys, camels, mules, and oxen. Vast of flies of flour, figs, cakes, clusters of raisins, wine, olive oil, cattle, sheep, goats were brought to the celebration. There was a great joy throughout the land of Israel. 1 Chronicles 13, 1-4a says, David consulted with all of his officials, including the generals and the captains of his army. Then he addressed the entire assembly of Israel and said, If you approve, and it is the will of the Lord our God, let us send messengers to all of the Israelites through the land, including the priests and Levites in their towns and pasture lands. Let us invite them to come and join with us. It is time to bring back the ark of our God, for we neglected it during the reign of Saul. Key phrase. The whole assembly agreed to this, for the people could see that it was the right thing to do. Observation. From the judges to King Saul, Israel experienced division and schism among the tribes and the people. In this passage, we see that David has been successful in amassing the greatest army in the the history of Israel. The reason for all of that was that they they believed in, loved, and valued David. As you read the list of the soldiers who were of this elite class, they were willing to lay their lives down for David. The loyalty and unity were amazing. The phrase in verse 38, in fact, everyone in Israel agreed that David should be their king, is almost unfathomable. You don't see that kind of any unity anywhere in our globe. The unity in Israel is seen in how they all gathered for fellowship and relationship around food and drink. This banquet was put on by all the relatives who were waiting for them when they arrived. The esprit de corps was extremely high. In chapters 13, verses 1 and 2, we have David, the master leader, consulting and including all of his officials, generals, and captains of the army in his decision first. Then he addressed the entire assembly of Israel. He was a very inclusive and thoughtful leader. He asked their opinion, and he got their full backing to move forward with God's purpose for Israel. In verse 2, David says, If you approve, and it is the will of the Lord our God. Very important. If you approve the people, and it is the will of the Lord our God, we will then tell the rest of Israel and invite them to come and join with us. Here's a few points of application. In this passage, we see the power of purpose, not just for Israel, But for your marriage, for your family, for your relationships, your business, the ministry you're involved in, and with any leadership role that God has given to you. First, verse 38 says, all of the soldiers came back for the single purpose of making David their king. This is a powerful lesson. 
So here's four different parts of application. One, declare the purpose people are willing to agree with. Leaders, this teaches us the truth about getting the support and the allegiance of the people that you're leading. If followers choose not to lead, guess what? You're not the leader. David had been anointed for 20 years earlier, and all these men and people of the nation of Israel knew that David had been appointed, anointed while Saul was still king. He won their loyalty by his faithfulness, character, integrity, and how he honored Saul even through the numerous amount of times Saul tried to kill him. This won their hearts. David never once hinted to the people of overthrowing Saul. He earned their respect by how he conducted himself. This is how we as husbands, wives, sons, daughters, ministry leaders, business leaders are to lead. We don't boss and tell people what to do and what they must think, but we lead by example and by creating a healthy culture. Oftentimes, submission issues in relationships and ministry start at the top. This doesn't mean you won't have people who are out to sabotage and undermine you because so many people today are so fragile and wounded. But if you have the loyalty of the group, oftentimes they will take care of the people who are causing the problems. Second point of application, take time to relate to each other around food. People find it easier to relax and be comfortable around each other when they celebrate and they eat together. Number three, get as much consent from the people you're leading and serving as possible. Verse four says, the whole assembly agreed to this for the people could see that it was the right thing to do. They could buy into what David was saying because they all saw that it was the right thing to do. It was David who wrote this in Psalms 133.1. How wonderful and how pleasant it is when brothers and sisters live together in harmony. This is the power of purpose, loved ones. It brings agreement. It's the foundation of our relationships and fellowship. It leads to group consensus, which produces harmony. Let's pray together. Father God, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your purposes and plans for our lives. We thank you that you have declared our purposes for our lives in the great commandment and the great commission. Our first purpose, you say, is to worship and to love you with all our hearts, souls, and mind. Help us to be more wholly devoted to you. Then we're to love, serve, and care for our neighbors as we care for ourselves. We are to orient our lives to living and speaking the good news of Jesus and his love and reconciliation. Fourthly, you want us to have a deep abiding love and affection and adoration for each other. Lastly, you've taught us the importance of discipleship, which means we're to be men and women of your word, prayer, giving of our time and talent and touch, treasure, tithe and trauma. Help us to commit our, to our small groups and to care for each other while we're in a mode of physical distancing. Lord, as we live with our families and our church family, that we not demand, bully, or force our positions on each other, but that you help us to learn how to build consent and reason with each other so that there can be mutual agreement that this is the way Jesus wants us to go, love, and live. Father, I pray for all of those who call CV Church their home church, that there will be no division and no disunity, but there will only be harmony and unity and a great commitment to the great commandment and the great commission that is building a great church here in Locris and around the world. It's in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Kathy and I love you, church family, CV Church family, so much. We pray for you every day. I just called somebody that I was concerned about today and was wondering how they were doing financially and was seeing if we needed as a church family to help them. And they said, Pastor, we have never prospered more than since we've entered into this virus. And so I am praying, and I'd like to just pray again for us. Lord, I ask that you just prosper. Every CV church member, those who are trusting your word, those who are tithing and giving of their treasure, Father, we ask you open the windows of heaven and you pour out a blessing upon them that they cannot contain and that they would be willing to give to others who need help. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can't wait to see you tomorrow with for another A Moment with the Truth. Bye.